Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this presentation on advanced sexual behavior and autism. Uh, this is by Travis Breeding, and I prepared this presentation for you guys today. And sit back and enjoy and learn and ask questions when you need to and when you want to. So thanks for tuning in. Today's introduction. Like I said, good morning, everyone. My name is Travis, and I'm here to talk to you about advanced levels of sexual behavior and autistic people and how applied behavior analysis, ABA, can help them learn appropriate sexual behaviors. Many autistic people struggle with understanding sexual behaviors, and without proper guidance, they can learn They can learn from people in situations that are not appropriate. I'm going to discuss the context behind sexual behavior and how autistic people might take things out of context. I will also include my own story of how I accidentally learned how to do something inappropriate and conclude by giving 20 key strategies BCBAs can use to help teach appropriate sexual behaviors and social steps for building romantic relationships in individuals with autism spectrum disorder. An overview of sexual behavior of autistic people. Autistic people often struggle with understanding and engaging in appropriate sexual behaviors. According to one study, almost 90% of individuals with autism spectrum disorder experience difficulties in this area. This can range from not understanding appropriate boundaries with others during interactions to not knowing how to initiate or sustain a romantic relationship and having difficulty understanding the context of sexual behavior. Very important. What's applied behavior analysis? Applied behavior analysis, ABA, is a scientific approach to understanding the changing behavior, understanding and changing behavior. ABA focuses on the environmental consequences that drive behavior, such as reinforcement and punishment. It is most commonly used to help people with autism spectrum disorder learn appropriate behaviors and skills, such as communication, socialization, self-care, and academic skills. ABA is also used in teaching appropriate sexual behaviors. <clears throat> My story, I accidentally learned how to, how I accidentally learned how to do something inappropriately. I was at a conference and I heard Dr. Peter Gerhardt present. During the presentation, he discussed how some, some men with autism approached women and skipped from step one to step 787. They would say, hi, I'm Travis. Can I touch your breasts? This was an example of inappropriate sexual behavior, but because I didn't have replacement behaviors nor anyone to talk to about this behavioral issue, I adopted the behavior that, and applied it to my life. Context is king. Context is a crucial element in understanding social interactions and appropriate sexual behavior. Autistic individuals often struggle with understanding context, and this can lead to them misinterpreting situations and engaging in inappropriate behavior. For example, an autistic person may not realize that a hug is, a, an appropriate, is appropriate between friends, two friends, between two friends, but not between two strangers. Context. Social contextual errors got me into trouble over the years. I had a guy friend who would try to teach me how to approach women for conversation. He walked up to a woman and said, hey, bitch, what's up? The woman responded positively to him and smiled at him. It was all good for him. I decided to try what he was doing and do the exact same behavior. I walked up to a woman and said, hey, bitch, what's up? That did not work for me like it did for my guy friend. This is a prime example of context being key. I know of a 22 year old woman who got pregnant because her parents told her she couldn't get pregnant until she got married. Um, and um, meaning she thought that scientifically and physically she could not get pregnant until she got married. Um, she took them literally. And therefore when she got pregnant, it was unexpected. She thought her parents lied to her and it was just a big nightmare, a big mess. So that just shows you how context is king. And it's important to dive into that from a young age. And then when we're talking about, guys, when we're talking about um, sexuality education, and autism spectrum disorder, we're not talking about teaching them about sex at five or 10 years old. We're talking about teaching them about social context so that they know how to interpret things and know how to generalize and apply things when they're appropriate at the appropriate age level when they get older. That's very important. <clears throat> um, sexual education is an important part of teaching appropriate sexual behaviors. Sexual education can range from teaching basic anatomy to understanding the importance of consent to understanding the legal aspects of sexual behavior, it can also include teaching about healthy relationships, such as showing respect for boundaries and setting limits and communication. My life, my sex ed, I didn't really have a sex education in my opinion. I had education about what makes babies and how to prevent STDs. Condoms are important, right? So these are important parts of sexuality education, but they're very basic. They also taught us abstinence until marriage, 
However, in today's society, teaching absence until is not best practice and has been shown to have an opposite effect. I was left to go to the internet to ask for my neuro, to ask my neurotypical peers about sex. Role playing. Role playing can be an effective way to teach appropriate sexual behaviors. Role plays can be used to stimulate to simulate various social situations and provide an opportunity for individuals to practice appropriate behaviors in a safe setting. Role plays can also be used to help individuals better understand the context of sexual behavior and when it is appropriate. 20 key strategies BCPAs can use to teach appropriate sexual behavior. One, teach individuals about boundaries and the importance of consent. So like there, we talk about a lot with, what I talk about a lot, Peter Gerhardt talks about 787 step chain from hi, how are you to can I touch you? There's 786 steps in between there, 785 steps in between there. Um, so you really have to chain the steps and teach all steps in the correct order and make sure that we're teaching the steps so that we can actually understand those boundaries in the relationship. Um, two, you can model appropriate behavior and in social interactions. Do a lot of video modeling would be helpful. Um, acknowledge and reward appropriate behavior. So just provide positive reinforcement for the appropriate behavior and uh, help shape that behavior. Provide social skills training. Uh, obviously, we want to teach those steps, two through 785. We want to teach those social skills because that's very important um, to that learners learn each step of the way process. Provide sexual education, that's important. So it's a two-way two street here. We have to teach the social skills, but we also have to teach sexuality education. Um, otherwise, one or the other is literally not doing us any good. Um, so we have to teach both social skills and sexuality education. Use role playing to stimulate different social situations. Again, your role playing is going to be your friend. So a lot of role playing, but make sure it's done in the natural environment teaching setting, um, and make sure you're actually role playing what you're what you want to teach um, in the right environment, in the right context. Use video modeling to demonstrate appropriate social skills. Teach appropriate communication skills, including how to start and end conversations. That's a big one because it's pretty hard. I always struggle with knowing when to start and end a conversation because I can't read the other person. So it's hard to read what they're saying and doing and interpret. And it's hard for me to interpret when to enter a conversation and when to leave a conversation. The visual support, use visual supports to provide cues and reminders, provide opportunities for practice in a safe setting, but make it a natural setting. So a safe, natural setting. Teach individuals to recognize emotions in themselves and others. Perspective taking will be very important. Um, if we can teach that perspective taking process, mind blindness, that would help. Use social stories to explain social situations. Yes, I like social stories. Um, we can use them to explain a lot of things regarding to social life and social behavior. Provide an understanding of healthy relationships. Model healthy relationships for them. Make sure you um, explain to them what a social, healthy social relationship is in a healthy romantic relationship, um, make sure they understand what's healthy and not healthy and things like that. So teach individuals to recognize and set limits. Everybody has boundaries to follow, but also you wanna have boundaries for yourself. Use scripted conversations to practice appropriate responses. That can be helpful. Uh, I like to script. Um, I'm very good at memorizing script and trying to practice that way. Teach individuals about different types of touch and when it is appropriate. So there's certain types of touch that are appropriate in one context and certain types of touch that are appropriate in a different context. And that's very important to understand for people with autism. Use visual schedules to help individuals break down social activities. And teach individuals to identify a safe person to talk to in the event of a sexual encounter. Stranger danger, teach them about that and teach them a safe person to talk to. That's very important. Teach them who they can talk to that's a very safe person for them to engage with and interact with. Teach individuals about the legal aspects of sexual behavior and provide individualized support for each individual's unique needs. So it's important to provide an individualized support plan. Now my sexuality journey. I was diagnosed with Asperger's at the age of 22, I'm 37 now. I pursued my diagnosis because women kept saying I was creepy nice when I wanted to date them. I knew something was off, but I didn't know what. So I went, on, went to a counselor on the campus I was at for college. And I wanted to find out you know, what was going on with him and asked him why. Why don't girls like me? And like, why do they think I'm weird and creepy and things like that? Um, it's bigger than just girls. So after weeks of conversation and some tests, the counselor decided it was much deeper that I have a problem than just not being able to talk to girls. He decided to have official autism testing done. And lo and behold, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. I thought the diagnosis would bring relief. However, I'd spend the next 15 years running into constant challenges and roadblocks to help, to getting help. Scope of practice. PCBAs are constantly expanding their scope of practice 
they are doing podcasts nowadays and disseminating the science of applied behavior analysis on levels that we could, like we've never seen before. This means that they're starting to become more competent in sexual behavior. Third-party payers, such as private insurance and government entities, aren't keeping up with the VCBA scope of practice. Thus, the gap between what is available to autistic people and what is being funded is growing. Creepy behavior. Creepy behavior is a great concept. It is hard for someone to teach. It is hard for someone to teach someone else what is creepy and what isn't. It is a tough thing to come up with an operational definition for. Woman told me I was creepy nice all the time. I didn't understand how I could be two people at once. How could I be good and how could I be bad at the same time? Buying affection. I started going to the bar with my peers. I wanted to dance with the woman and connect with them like other boys were. Girls started telling me if I bought them drinks, they would buy, dance with me. Um, they wanted me to buy them a lot of drinks to keep dancing with them. I would spend about 300 bucks per night out just buying women drinks. It got expensive and I had to stop, but nonetheless, the learned behavior of paying someone for sexual attention was born. Learned behavior. Buying women's attention became a learned behavior for me. It would escalate to buying bigger and more expensive things for romantic attention. I developed a belief system that I would never get a girlfriend for free. This caused depression, anxiety, and PTSD. Girls would literally ask for cars or breast implants in order for romantic attention. The chase. Some women liked to play games with me because they knew I was gullible. They would tell me to meet them somewhere, I'd show up and they weren't there. Then they'd tell me to meet them somewhere else, I'd show up and they weren't there either. This would happen five or six different times in the same evening before I would catch on and be like, they're not going to meet me and they're not going to show up. And that is what we got so far. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching tonight. And we'll be adding to this presentation for you guys when we do this in person or on Zoom. And yeah, thanks for watching.